Um, I just I love that question. Um, what do you want the church to look like in five years? And I just wanted to know what you wanted the church to look like. <laughs> 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 Come on, Tom. Go. Come on. You know, we don't have the time. But I'll give you just a, a few oh. things. I believe that the Lord is looking for a people in literally geographical locations where the glory could rest, where the presence of the Lord could rest, the long term. Uh, right now we have moments, we have even seasons where there's unusual anointing, but I believe the Lord is wanting to find a people he can rest upon that will learn to host his presence and geographical locations. I believe the day is coming when, for example, this 70 acres of land that we have here, there will actually be a radiance of God's presence that just rests on the property, visible to people. Now, we already have that in measure right now, as we have people that drive by on the freeway, and they can tell something is different about what's happening on the hill, but they don't know what it is. They don't know what they've seen. They don't know what they felt when they drove by. We have people that drive onto the property and immediately begin to be impacted by the Lord. People walk into the building. It happens in part now. But I feel like there's, you know, throughout history, there's been times where there's just been this fire that would come up out of the roof of the building, and yet there was no fire. It was just uh, the glory of God. I feel like we're going to have that. I feel like, I feel like knowing how to carry that presence. Um, you know, we're we're a fairly presence-conscious culture, and yet we have so so far to go. And learning how to make what we just experienced in that three-hour unbelievable worship time, how to carry that same presence into the workplace, into the restaurant afterwards, shopping, how to make it to where there's no difference between the measures and realms of an army that carry different parts of life. I feel like that's a big deal. I feel like uh, I feel like what's coming is there's going to be periods of time where the war comes up so powerfully, uh, comes up so powerfully that um, uh, the people literally are laid out for hours, and, uh, and believe it or not, there'll be sometimes only for days. Yeah. Um, we've had tastes of all these things. We've had tastes, we have tastes of these where people have, have literally have been just laid out for hours and hours and hours, maybe, you know, from the morning into the afternoon or evening. Or, so I, I feel like most of the stuff that I long for has to do with the presence of the Lord. We've had very strong prophetic words about ambulances driving up the hill, uh, you know, with the, with the dying or the dead. Uh, we've ha actually had plans to create a helicopter pad where they can bring in uh, the bodies for the, the emergency helicopters. I, that, that stuff is in my heart. I feel like, I feel like one of the areas that we've had breakthrough in that I can't find in history, and if any of you uh, history buffs, uh, church history buffs, know where this has happened in history, I'd really like to know because I would study it. But I don't know of any time in history where it has become common for people to be healed in public outside of a service. I don't know any time in history where it is normal. There will probably be you know, 10, 20 people, 30 people healed today in Reading just as our people shop, they go grocery shopping. There will be miracles. There will be miracles from a sore back, no longer sore, to cancer dissolving in somebody's body, and everything in between. And uh, and I don't know of a time when that's happened so consistently in history. But there are other things that happen in history that we've not seen yet. I think I think we've gone past in some areas and realms. And I'm really thankful for it. But there are some things that have happened in history that we've not yet touched. Any stuff from the Pharisee. When she went to a city, it was normal for there to be nobody left in the hospital, Come hospitals on. of that city when she left town. They would, the ambulances, they would bring in the dying, they would have what they called death wards, and they would line up in front of the auditorium, the cots, the beds of the people that had barely any life left, and they would line them up. My uh, uncle was a soloist uh, for her, and uh, my, uh, uh, my aunt was baptized in the Holy No, she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Smith Wiggles was me. But my family was involved in, in uh, some of these uh, Amy stuff on the first meeting. Wow. And I overheard a conversation back in the early 90s with some of these saints that were like teenagers during this time. They were very old and they were together talking. And I, was, I was just listening. I was at a family reunion. My uncle had turned 90 and all of his compadres were together. And they were over in a 
when we're talking. And I just heard them talking, and I just kind of went and hung out. And one of them said to the other, and they were talking about that time, they said, it was like heaven on earth. Wow. And I went, yes. It must have been. That's what it's supposed to be like. Yeah. And what would happen is literally every single person would get up off that bed, one by one, wow. one by one, all across the front of that room. That no matter the situation, no matter what the conflict or problem is, they would arise. Wow. Wow. And there are things like that that we've only seen in, you know, I've seen the wheelchairs empty, I've seen, uh, you know, those kinds of things happen, but not every one. And there'll be 150 of them. You know. I, I, I'm not happy until I see that. Amen. I've got to see that. So I feel like in five years, I feel like that's some of what we're talking about. I feel like, I feel like holiness is, that we're in a place where holiness can be valued for what it is. The Bible says, in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is the basis for all beauty. It's actually the, it's like the, the structure from which all beauty comes and emanates from the holiness of God. And uh, whether it's beauty in music or art or creation, it all stems from His holiness. And I feel like we're in a place where we can actually do it. And the holiness would be a, a value of divine nature again. It would be something that would be treasured and valued, not as a, not as a legalism, not as a, uh, something that would beat people over the head with, but actually as an invitation to divine nature. I think, I think in the, within the next five years, I think we could come into something like that that would be much more, much greater. I think in the next five years, we'll have more and more a uh, place of input into the seven realms of society, uh, which we have now. I mean, it's increasingly thankful for it, but I feel like within five years, there will be, be exponential increase. We have realms of influence that, uh, and when I say we, I don't mean God, I mean the body of Christ. Uh, uh, influence in the realms of politics and, and Hollywood, uh, the things that are going on there, business and business and all this stuff. But I, I just feel like, I feel like in the next five years we'll have some of our greatest, most significant breakthroughs in this area. So it's a long story. That's, it mostly has to do with the presence of the Lord.